Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. In today's episode, a very small but powerful device that may help you create awesome automation. The Node MCU. A temperature sensor connection, programming of the device with embedded web server, and connection to the Wi Fi. The Node MCU is a low cost open source IoT platform, a microcontroller based on ESP8266 module. Since it has several GPIOs, we can connect it with other components and create some great functionalities. Today, we will use some very cheap and easy to find components that will help us create the cheapest Wi Fi capable temperature and humidity meter. Apart from the Node MCU, we need a temperature and humidity sensor. We will use the DHT11, a cable for connection, and a micro USB cable for programming and powering the device. The sensor has three pins. The first one, with the plus, must be connected to 3V in the Node MCU. The other, with the minus sign, must be connected to the ground of the Node MCU. And finally, the last one, which is marked as out, must be connected to a GPIO pin. In our case, we will use D6 pin. Now that the connection is ready, we must connect the Node MCU to the laptop via a micro USB to a USB A cable. In order to program Node MCU, we need a tool. A very common solution is to use Arduino IDE. But since we have a better solution, we will not use it. We will use Visual Studio Code, which is one of the best free editors. If you don't have Visual Studio Code installed, you can download it from the internet. Just search for Visual Studio Code. And use the relevant link in order to download it. Since we have it already installed, we can skip this step. We need an additional extension, so we go to relevant place and search for platform IO and press install. After some seconds, platform IO is installed. In order to create a new project, you press the relevant button and the project wizard appears. Next, we provide the name for our project and select the board. Search for Node MCU and select version 1 and press finish. After some seconds, our project is ready. If we navigate to source and main file, here is our starting point. We can start writing our code. But we will not do it right now, since we have the project already created and stored on the GitHub. 
So open a browser and go to GitHub and search for Poseidon Tech. Then select a relevant repository and download the file. Remember that this is a completed project. Next, we must unzip the file and open the project with Visual Studio Code. Go to Platform.io and select Open Project. Find the files you have just downloaded and press Open. Now it's time for some modifications in the source code. Open the main file and the CRC folder. We will not go through the whole source code, but we will check just some points that need special attention. First of all, on the SSID variable, we can set up the SSID of the Wi-Fi network we want to be connected. And the password as well. Next, we must define the number of the pin. Have in mind that we have used D6, but this is actual GPIO 12. So, here we must define the number 12. Next, we must select the type of the sensor. We will use DHT11 since it's the sensor we are using. Next, we must select the port of the web server and the interval for reading the temperature and humidity values. Now it's time to build our code. In order to do so, we press the relevant button on the bottom. After some seconds, our code is ready. Now it's time to program our Node MCU. Press the button and let's wait some seconds. You can check the progress on the terminal in the bottom. Our device is successfully programmed and now we are connected to the serial port. OK, it is connected to Wi-Fi and an IP address has been assigned and we can see the values of the temperature and the humidity sensor. The values are updated periodically every 10 seconds as we configure it in the source code. Now let's check the embedded web server that we have configured. In order to do so, we open a browser and we go to the IP address that has been assigned to the node MCU. OK. As you can see, we have the values shown as expected. Apart from the main interface, we have also some two additional endpoints, one for temperature and one for humidity. These two endpoints returns just the value. We will use these endpoints on the next episode. Let's check also from a mobile device. OK, the same results as it is expected. As well as the two endpoints for temperature. And for humidity. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please press like and consider subscribe to our channel. See you on the next episode.